verse, verse 22 says, uh, uh, he took one of the ribs of his ribs. No, no, watch, watch what it says. 21 says, and Lord calls, and Lord God calls a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs. One. Look at somebody say he took one. And, and, and I like how the, the other part of the scripture is enclosed up the flesh. Wait, wait just a minute. Closed up the flesh instead thereof. I, I love the, 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 the language of the text. It says enclose up the flesh. Let, let's talk about it for a minute. Enclose up the flesh. Closed up the flesh. I, I want you to look at somebody and said and say to them, uh, and he closed up the flesh. And he closed up the flesh. Ain't that good news? That that, that God closed up the flesh. That, that, that's what he did. He closed up the flesh. He closed up the flesh. Watch, watch what it says. Instead, thereof. He closed up the flesh. Instead, thereof. He took one, somebody said one, one. of the ribs. Adam had more than one rib. And God closed up up the flesh instead thereof. The language of the text indicates to me that the Lord intended for man to have one wife. Watch this. Shh, 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 shh. Watch this. One wife. Now we understand that there are biblical principles that will allow of uh, people to, to remarry and so forth and so on. We're not discussing that at this moment. We can, we can get into that and tie into that a tad bit later. Amen. But, but, but for the gentleman to understand that you must be careful in your selection. Amen. Because, because getting married is something you just, wanna, you just don't want to continue to do. That's my niece right there. You see, me, you see me winking at that woman right there? That's my niece right there. I know how y'all think. <laughs> Poor things. And the Lord, and the Lord, and the Lord, he, he opened it. The, the, the writing of the text is so magnificent. Uh, until he tells us, he said, this is what we're going to do. He said, I'm going to put you to sleep. Now, now I'm, I've been trying to gain greater revelation about the deep sleep. Why is it God did not allow Adam to be involved in the design? What I mean, it was his wife. I mean, if, if you're gonna buy something to me, you know, if you don't really know me that well, I want you to come get my advice. Some stuff I like, some stuff I don't like. Amen. Amen. I don't want a purple car. <laughs> don't buy me no purple car. I mean, I mean, there's things that people don't like. There, there are things that people will not get into too much. But why is it? Did he put him in, in the, the Bible says he put him in a, a sleep. But he said he put him in a deep sleep. He didn't want Adam to even wake up to see what was going on. He made him go to sleep. That's the, the deep sleep almost deals with the aspect of being in a coma-like state. Where that, where that, while he was in that coma-like state, God let him stay there. Now watch this. Taking a rib from somebody 
got to be painful. Took a rib, something that was connected to something else. Did he break it off? Did, he just, did it just come off easy? Or, but he put him in a deep sleep. In other words, it's almost like modern day operating. Because he had, to, he, had to, he had to put him to sleep because getting out of him what's in him hurts. Uh, could, could I suggest to you now I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not stating that this is emphatically something that would be absolutely and totally truth. It's a suggestion. Can I, can I suggest to you? I like to say, who I can tell. I love the, I love the temple. It's about what is it you're going to suggest? <laughs> can I suggest to you that um, uh, connecting with the right person has some pain to it? I'm just talking. It, it takes it takes p pain for you to be reorganized and 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 for you to be to be have something ex extracted from you to make something else. Most relationships that I have seen in my life, been part of in my life, had some pain to it. Especially if it was worth keeping. How, how am I doing? Am I doing all right? We, we want things to be easy, don't, don't we? We want no problem. We don't want no problem oftentimes because we, we, we come out of situations that had problems and we, we're so busy trying to patch up the possibility of stuff. But see, see, see this is what relationship is about. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with this and I'm going to go a little bit further into the aspect of, 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 of Ephesians. When... You find yourself in a marital situation, it is how you handle pain as to whether or not that situation is going to be successful. When you're in a marital situation, what you do, you, 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 you take out your, your heart and you give it to somebody. And you say, you say you can do what you want to do with that. If you want to throw it down, step on it, and mess it up, and hurt me. You, you have no control over what anybody does with this. And, and to try to monitor control is even more painful. It's like, it's like the baby right there that's crying. The baby's crying, you know, if you, if you get a baby a glass of water on a marble floor, you be trying to chase the baby, but don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it. But, but, but oftentimes, if you just give it to him or give it to her, she might be able to just handle it without your assistance. But you cannot monitor, thank you, sweetie, you cannot monitor what folk do with your heart. It's not, it's not, it's something that you give voluntarily. And say, here, take, take this. Now, now I, I want you to go with me to the book of Ephesians. Let's, let's run over there right quick. And, and let's, see, let's see what the Lord says about a couple of things. Now, now, the Bible particularly does not provide us with a safety net. When it comes to relationship, let's, let's look at verse uh, 22 in chapter 5. It says, Why well, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord? Let's look at that again. It, it, it doesn't provide, well, if he talks to you a certain kind of way today, or if he does this for you 
today a certain type of way. It says just submit. It says just submit. You go further, it says, it says wives, it says husbands, love your wives as the Lord loves the church. It, it don't say love her, you know, until, you know, things look shaky. As a matter of fact, that's when you ought to love more. When things look shaky. Any, anybody can love somebody when things are going great. There's, there's no Christian ethic, no Christian, no Christian virtue in loving someone that, that, that's just easy to love. No problems, no nothing. You, you are going to be tested in this ministry. You, you can't hook up with somebody. Even, even if, you, if you apply every little rule, every principle here, and we talk about emotions and we talk about them and we try to teach one another how to handle them but emotions sometimes can get out of hand sometimes what we have to do with our emotions is kind of it's almost like uh, uh, somebody trying to change the flow of a river now you can change the flow of the Anacostia you can block off one area and you can dig a new ditch and, 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 and run that thing into a different uh, 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 direction. But it's going to take a whole lot of time and effort. It's the same way it is with dealing with your emotions. You, 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 got to, you got to block this off and channel these emotions to, a little bit toward Christ or toward praising or toward doing the right kind of thing. You got to channel that passion in a different way. If you don't do that, you're going to find out that the enemy will find you easy to upset. Because all the enemy got to do is give you this. I want you to be smart enough, not, just in, not, in relation, not only in relationship, but in business, in your personal life, in, in the dynamics that will keep you in a good mood. Because you do know that anxiety and depression are the enemies of a good mood. Anxiety and depression are the enemies of you getting to your destiny. Anxiety and depression are the enemies to you obtaining eternal joy. Because you get anxious about something, and the Bible said, don't be anxious over nothing. That's why I told you earlier, don't praise God because you feel good. Praise Him because He is good. Praise has nothing to do with how you feel.